Hello, everyone, and welcome to Life Support Live. This is the weekly show that explores how Star Trek can help us to boldly go in our own lives to better ourselves and the rest of humanity. But along the way, to have a little fun. Maybe even ruffle some feathers. <laughs> Especially <laughs> feathers if they're in your pillows. Because uh, today, <laughs> we are talking about sleep. We're going to explore sleep in the final frontier. We're going to talk about how you can get a better night of sleep. We're going to share how we've been sleeping. And we're going to have a lot of fun in the process. As always, I am Dr. Ali Matu. I am a clinical psychologist. And I'm joined by my friend and colleague and Trexpert... Hey, it's Dr. Trek, Larry Nimichek, coming at you from Trekland. So, you know, between the two of us, we have one real doctor. We do, we do. Um, um, but again, like, it's up for you, up to you to decide <laughs> who you think that one might be. Um, let's get things started. We want to know in the comments, let us know, how are you sleeping right now? What's helping you yes. to sleep? Maybe listening to Larry and I puts you to sleep. <laughs> who knows? What's getting in the way of your sleep? We're going to have a really fun discussion that's hopefully going to help people. If this is your first time at Life Support Live, Larry, what? What is this? What are we doing here? Well, hi. Well, we're coming at you on YouTube, or we're coming at you on Facebook, and even on Twitch, where our, our Twitch follower count is is zooming to the stratosphere now at five or six, <laughs> but we're there. <laughs> but you should know that we are multi-streaming, which means that if you see us talking uh, to people in chat and you don't see who we're talking to, it's because all the platforms, we have a combination chat, but you don't. So yeah. just... Yep. That's driven some people crazy recently. So uh, people on Twitch, you won't see anybody but the Twitch, but most chatters are on Facebook. We've got people on YouTube, on, on your channel, at, at The Psych Show, on mine, at um, at, at Larry Nimichek's Trekland. Uh, our I I anonymous uh, LS host <laughs> channel on Twitch. So wherever you are, please chat it and join us. But here's yeah. the great unifier. Especially today. Now we've had we've had Skype available. We've had one caller so far in all, the entire history of Life Support Live. I'd like to think that one and a half. One and a well, half. Yes, we've had one and a half. That's true. We had another, <laughs> the, the, our second we had caller, we couldn't get the audio. It. We had Brian. <laughs> but here's the thing. Uh, today's topic. If if you if you stay awake that long, <laughs> today's topic is sleep. And I think everybody. This is why we've got the topic today. We've had. I hope you you've been voting in our polls. Like, right, we've been putting up poll choices, and this has been like a perennial bridesmaid for several weeks. So, here we are today because everyone's talking about sleep. Haven't you found that out? Yeah, all oh, yeah. Um, sleep is something that I think all of us are struggling with, and it's also something I think sleep is one of those areas in mental health that people are super open and comfortable talking with because we all. That's we all do it, and we all have better sleep sometimes and not so good sleep other times. Right, and I just think in Corona crazy time, and that's always true, but especially now, people are yeah. all, all over the map, and I've heard people talk about it live, I've seen people talk about it out of the blue on, online in comments, so yeah. if, if anything in these early, uh, these early episodes, I'm hoping that people, this is the kind of thing that people want, oh, hell yeah, I'll tell you about my <laughs> sleep stuff lately, and come in and Skype with us when we get to that part of the show. So, yeah, you can, uh, you know, you can um, find us at Life Support Live Host mm -hmm. on Skype. Just send us a message, and we'd love to bring you on, and we'd love to have everyone to continue uh, sharing in the comments section. So if you're returning to Life Support Live, if you like this show, help you're us share it. Jamming. If you, <laughs> if we haven't completely scared you all away, um, do us a favor and share this show with someone who you think would have some fun listening to it and maybe get something out of it. We're trying to share this with as many Trek mm -hmm. fans as we can. Um, we made this show to bring the community together to help us. <laughs> like, I've had a ton of fun just looking forward to having these conversations with you, Larry, and with you yeah. in the audience. Uh, but we want to help the show grow. So um, share it with someone you love and uh, or share it with someone you don't love but who loves Star Trek. <laughs> That's cool, too. Uh, we right. could do you know that. what? I, I mean, we, we, I'm coming out of, <laughs> I'm coming out of my doctorhood, which is, you know, Star Trek. But um, I, you don't have to be a hardcore. Tell, tell your significant others that might be interested in our topics about mood, you know, and mental health. It's, a, it's a light touch, number one, and number two, they don't have to have their own doctorate in geekology or in trekology. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to think that we keep the show light enough, and and relatable enough. So. 
we're kind of we're kind of showing our our watch collection under the <laughs> under the jacket here. But um, but seriously, we're we're we are trying to grow the show, and uh, I think it does a lot of good. Even if you're a light touch geek, or you yeah. have a friend that's a light, or your significant other, or your kids. Or yeah. your parents. <laughs> watch it together. Bring everyone together. Watch it on separate screens so we get more views. <laughs> you know, um, the comments section is on fire. Everyone, yes. We're getting yeah. so many comments and stories about sleep. We're going to be taking those comments, um, sharing them with you all, um, talking about them in a moment. But without further ado, Larry, let us jump in to the briefing room. Ah, yeah. Let's go into the briefing room here. So, Larry, there is a lot of sleep in Star Trek. <laughs> As we discovered looking at the memory alpha entry for sleep, every moment where sleep is documented, like a character sleeps too yeah. much. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of it. But um, there's a few episodes that actually came to your mind that would be good ones for us. Um, should, we draw, should we start there talking about these episodes? Okay, let's start there. Yeah, let's start. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to do that. Yeah, a little uh, the, data moment right sleep, there. Yeah. Processing. No, I, when you mention sleep in Star Trek, it's like the whole, I, I think as, as we're all finding now, it's sleep is one of those things that we take for granted, we don't think about, but sleep is a great tool for, for drama, it's a great tool for science fiction writing, because it's the most innocuous things when they get messed with that can be the most frightening. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, we're verging on you can verge on horror here. And there have been some great horror movies and horror themes yeah. that deal with sleep and people that invade dreams. I mean, that's a whole. Oh, yeah. A whole realm. And I know we're, we're our our topic is today sleep. I think we're going to verge into dreams. I yeah. still want to keep dreams as a separate uh, as a separate it's, topic. It's somewhere. um, it's wibbly wobbly. They're yeah. connected. Yeah. yeah. There are no rules here <laughs> in life, <laughs> life except, uh, you know, go boldly. <laughs> but uh, but no, when we mention sleep, several shows come to mind. Number one, to me, was Night Terrors, yeah. even though it wasn't the best episode <laughs> as no. an episode. That, it, you're talking no, about the Troy floating through green space. We're talking about Flying episode. Troy. Yeah. Yes, 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 which, yes, yes. Which, if you've read my Next Gen Companion, all the people on the show were like, oy vey. Like, the way <laughs> it came out. It was a great idea, but putting, like, no more Superman Troy. <laughs> Which is sad because you know Dax got uh, Terry got to be uh, action Barbie, but uh, uh, Marina never got to be action Troy. Uh, she, no, no more Superman flying. But no, there's yeah. that one, and they use the concept of. And, and here's what I want to ask you about: when these episodes have thrown around, you know, a lot of times the science is great, sometimes the science isn't so great, and future projecting out of REM sleep and alpha waves and beta waves and all of that. These these shows throw that terminology around. But also, we got into sleep, but also dreams in a more sinister way. Uh, Night Terrors used sleep as a, as a, actually an ultimate escape. It was an actually yeah. a heroic moment for Troy, and she rescued a whole crew that had been trapped. Yep. But um, uh, schisms... <laughs> was an episode that was a little more nefarious in sleep. It was the invasion route. That was the the Riker vivid mm -hmm. nightmare. Um, and yes, we had a comment, does Troy have more than one sleep episode? Troy talks about sleep a lot. And this is one of the episodes where she's doing therapy. With, she's counseling these different crew members. They realize they're having a similar nightmare. They come together in the holodeck and realize they've all been seeing the similar medical experiment They're having a joint dream which yeah. kind of, which even though we've got aliens involved here we should get into that and i wonder you know yeah. no one's ever exploited whether uh betazoids or vulcans have if it's possible to to dream meld oh Ooh, my was, gosh <clears throat> that is a fascinating i just question, i just thought of that. or maybe um, it's been touched on yeah but yes this is schisms is the show where deanna actually counsels and they use the holodeck as a tool and not a bad plot device. Um, but it's the, it's the show. Everybody has that image of, of Riker sliding off his bed into a little, his own little personal quarters anomaly. You know, that's yeah. the image. But we'll, we'll talk about more about that show. But the other one that is in the title is a Voyager episode called yeah. Waking Moments, where, again, aliens were messing with minds of the crew through their dreams and their sleep cycle. But it wasn't even nefarious. It was just, oh, we're just doing some experiments, and we're just meet. This is how we meet people, which yeah. you know, it's a wide world. It's a big galaxy out there, Mister Scott. But yeah, <laughs> and then there's some one-off things like 
when we actually use sleep as a character device for species instead of just like ear yep. shapes, you yep. know, or blood color. Yep. Sleep defines, a spe- uh, most notably, I want to say flocks and the really funny scenes of his sleep in um, two days. The part of two days yeah. and two nights people don't remember is flocks being having to be awoken out of his denobulan uh, hibernation. hibernation. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. There's, um, there's, there's a lot of little moments like T'Pol having headaches and seeking um, and not being able to sleep and getting mm-hmm. medical treatment for that. I think that's something a lot of us can relate to. Um, sleeping in hibernation, like uh, our, our, our good Dr. Flox. Um, we, we talked about dreams here. There's um, Unimatrix Zero. And yes. dreams being a refuge, a place to escape, and this sort of shared consciousness experience there. I think there's um, there's so many experiences here that um, can both help us to understand sleep and then also take a big leap of imagination. But, you know, that's why we're here to, well, to talk about yeah. uh, Star Trek. So many of these, and, and again, these are our kind of springboards to talk about sleep today, but it's also interesting... I mean, I like to think we have a that we we're doing our own mirror series here, Ali. Except <laughs> instead of uh, not having beards <laughs> for our mirror <laughs> selves, the mirror we're talking about here is the mirror of reality in Star Trek, and then the mirror of reality w- in reality. Would and, mirror Doctor Trek and mirror Doctor Ali? Would they just not have beards? Would that so. be or maybe maybe Larry they would have mustaches. I think Mirror, Mirror Larry and Mirror Ali might have mustaches because... Muff stashes? B- based on your reaction. A.K.A. porn stashes? Uh, <laughs> I think that would scare a lot of people, so it deservingly belongs to be in the Mirror Universe. Yeah. Let us know in the comments below, what facial hair would Larry and I have in the Mirror Universe? Um Mirror Universe, what would they be doing right now? Their their streaming show would be about how to inflict terror on people based right, upon... How to keep people awake to induce... Uh, <laughs> right, yeah. right, right. That would be False confessions. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, speaking of you and me, Larry, um, before we get into the counselor's log and dive into this a little bit more, how have you been sleeping during oh. these oh, coronavirus yeah. shelter-in-place very strange times we find ourselves in. And I want to, yeah, it is a strange time. I want to make sure and, and catch up. Hey, everybody, uh, Ali and I both will do this. We are going through, even though we're not jumping in the chat at the moment, and we may do it off and on, but I do want to see what everybody's saying in chat, too. My situation, uh, I'm va- I, what I call, or I heard somebody call it years ago, vampiring a lot. Mm. You know what that is? Uh, staying up late? At sleeping yeah, during the day? It, well, like not just staying up late, but like your whole cycle is shifting. Like there's no floor, and I've been up. And you know, part of this is because over, for 20 plus years I've worked with Brits and Germans, and I, you know, and it's not like I'm in New York. No, I'm in L.A. So it's like my my working window got extended, and I think that's just permanently affected me. But I can I can slide that way uh, easily, you know, sleep late, but or or not. Sometimes I have to get up for the rest of the world, and I've been I've been vampiring and a lot of times cutting hours back, which is not healthy. Yeah. So yeah, I'm just saying. But I I'm okay to get to. Sometimes some nights I've been awake, but it's more it's not so much worry that it is uh, just mind having a million things going on. I've been working harder the last two or three months than I had been the year or two before, but. That's a corona casualty too. How about you? Um, it's sleep has been a casualty of my uh, coping with uh, coronavirus. It's it's one of the things that I think I am doing the worst. <laughs> Just to give you a sneak preview of my next episode of the Psych Show, it's called "Real Psychologist Tries to Overcome His Insomnia." And um, what's happened to me is uh, two things. One, so I don't have childcare anymore. I have a little girl, and um, she she's at that beautiful age where all she wants is to spend time with her parents. Um, that's great, except when we're trapped together <laughs> all day long, because her mom and I can't get anything done. So during the day, we're we're juggling meetings. And um, the parent who doesn't have a meeting is taking care of her. And then once she's asleep, that's when we actually can do work. And it's actually the time where my wife and I can spend some time together. So yeah. I, I am up much later doing work. 
and then I also have a harder time falling asleep because when I hit the bed um, and really having to work on that and trying things that I never had to do before to calm my body down. I used to sleep like this. I used to not like Q. Like I'm not. I just. I just realized. Flashers. Right, right, right. I go like this, and I've had eight hours of sleep. It's great. Um, no, that. So it's been. It's been a struggle for me, and I've been struggling with sleep in a way that I never had before. I've never. It's never been a tough one for me, but now it is. Yeah, I and I'm good about. It. I've always been a good sleeper, even though I've had uh, had apnea diagnosed years ago and used a CPAP a lot of times. Yeah. Yep. I've never had a. I've never felt like I had a like. You know it because later on. But in the process, unless I'm like sick and have a fever, I sleep. Once I'm asleep, I sleep like a brick. Yeah, yeah. And then it's hard to and it's hard to wake up, or it's like, oh no. So I miss having the full night. But for years and years and years, I've I've in the interest of being a good overachieving American, I've or trying to be, I uh, <laughs> I've, I've sacrificed sleep over the years yeah, a lot. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but this is just this is like nothing. But the thing is, what got this on my radar was I when you hear other people, like we'll get back to the chat here. Yeah. That's I sleep is one of the first um, casual for whether it's about again whether it's from being worried about finances or a job having a job and being out in the virus yep. or not having a job yep. and finances and yep. and in your case having the whole having the whole gang <laughs> together all day long twenty four seven. And having everybody suddenly be teachers and care, like, oh, this is why we hire people to do these jobs right, for us. Right, right. Well, well and, the government like, even hires people to do these jobs for us. I, I mean, we are built to be raised by a community. And mm -hmm. in some cultures, that community is just living together. And in other cultures, you have to, like, purchase parts of those community <laughs> and support. Um, and have, not having that is is really rough. Uh, I think we, we have to it get back to the... It takes a Zoom call, it takes, yeah, yeah, right. I wish. I wish, Larry. Um, it, very important comments coming in. Uh, Matthew yeah. Fitzgerald saying, Ali would have a walrus mustache. I'm assuming that's the big one. Is that the one that goes yeah, around? Big, you know. Yeah, yeah. If yeah. um, Matthew, if I could, if I could grow one of those, I would, I would really love to have one. Uh, Glenn uh, says mutton chops um, is, oh. is what what we need. Larry, I would love to grow mutton chops with you in the mirror universe. Oh. Um, I, I think that I would know how intimate I'd be about it, but okay. Um. <laughs> um, Bill says uh, we would have well manscaped goatees. So I, I don't know if that's a slight dig at Spock's man, uh, goatee. I, I think his was pretty well manscaped as well. Mm -hmm. um, it was. It was probably just it's, taped he on. He had the best of Freddie Phillips to, to give it to him. So, Larry, um, do you know if it was grown or not? Or was, it, was that a fake oh, goatee? No, no yeah. it was applied. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah. he went back and forth. They didn't like, because they were shooting back-to-back -back shows. He didn't have time to like grow that in uh, one day or two days, right? Yeah, yeah. no, true. No, it's applied. True. It's applied, yeah. So, um, we, in, and in seriousness, uh, we're getting... He could, though. He, in, over the years, he was able to grow beards and mustaches very easily. He was very... Well, you see him when he's got the shirt off in patterns of fours. Leonard was very hirsute all over. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, we had one comment. I'm going to try to find who it's from. That, um, yes, this is Daniel Adams um, on Facebook said, I actually bought a Kindle. And I made a point of disconnecting it from social media before sleeping. And so there's there's been a lot of discussion and debate about uh, using your phone late at night, especially in bed. Some people say the blue light from the phone is a problem. And there's mixed research on that. I'm a believer in the blue light, but some people uh, question the science on that. Um, I'm only really a believer because I got these glasses that filter out blue light and is has reduced eye strain for me. But mm. the other thing that can be a problem with using a phone in your bed is uh, if you engage in activities that wake you up and make you more alert. So notifications will do that. Right. Social media can do that, depending on how emotional the content is that you're looking at. So Daniel, I love this idea of using a Kindle to re I'm guessing reading is probably soothing for you and it might be associated with falling asleep. That's great. Um, Kindle, not a lot of light. If you don't have social media, mwah, I love it. Beautiful sleep <laughs> hygiene, Daniel. Beautiful. Um, when reading is soothe for mental. 
<laughs> that was bad. Not fundamental, but soothing. Okay. Libby said, last night was my first very good normal um, sleep since it started. Um, so, Libby, congratulations. Uh, sounds like you uh, going to a state park was really helpful. You also had a nice long drive. Um, so, there's something called biophilia, which is just mm. exposure to nature, Larry, for some reason, uh-huh. is soothing, calming, and it, um, it, people who have, this is really fascinating stuff, um, people who go through surgeries, and um, if they have a picture of nature versus a picture of a cityscape, the people who have the picture of nature huh. tend to recover a little bit better. Um, so there's something about connection with nature that helps, but the other thing here, Libby, is uh, getting physical exhaustion during the day will help you sleep at night. And for many of us, we're getting less physical activity because we've been sheltering in place. So, so glad to hear that that park opened. That's why it's, it's been, you know, on the political side, it's been interesting, or the logistical side, I should say, not so much political. Sometimes it becomes political, but it shouldn't be. This whole thing about opening up parks and on one hand, Mm -hmm. you know, and beaches and all of that. And it's been interesting, at least, I don't know about nationwide, but they've tried to make a distinction here in California between yes everything you just said the physical exertion is great it's healthy it tires out our bodies so it's not just our minds that are tired our bodies are tired too a little bit and makes sleep come easier but also you're juggling that against the social distancing distancing and if one or two or at most families are out walking and hiking that's fine as long as it doesn't become you know we're running into millions of people so they've The idea of keeping hiking trails and walking places and just local parks open as long as, you know, and then people like throw their mask on when they (laughs) see someone coming versus just thinking, oh, everything's open. Like, what's the difference? Well, the one difference is there's such a health uh, benefit to exactly what we're talking about here. But balancing it against, you know, all the old social distancing factors that we're trying to. Larry, I I think this brings up a big uh, what I hope becomes a big discussion for us moving forward past uh, COVID-19 is the idea of third spaces. So we have our homes, we have our work or school, and then there are third places, places where people can come together as a community. And over the last few decades, third spaces have largely become shopping centers and malls yeah. um, and indoor spaces. And um, we, we've seen a little bit of a loss of open community gathering places that are outdoors. So COVID-19 has showed us, or 19, yeah, COVID-19, I thought I said 17. Someone is sleep deprived, that's this guy. Um, we, we need more third spaces that are open areas where people can gather and socially distance right now. It's, I hope we move more towards that in, in the coming years. Yeah. There's Bring a, back the Chautauqua. Bring back the... <laughs> Larry, there's a comment I'm hoping you can comment to, which is from Scott on Facebook. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Scott Martin says, uh, sleep has been an issue for me for years until I was diagnosed with sleep apnea. I tolerate uh, CPAP, um, uh, but uh, do not have good results mm-hmm. from it. Larry, sounds like you've had periods in your life where you experienced uh, sleep apnea and have used a CPAP. I've, well, like I said, I, since we're talking about sleep, I guess so. I've had a CPAP and a, I had a diagnosis in 2006 yep. and did the whole thing. Uh, I, I weighed about 50 pounds more then at yep. the time. And my, I've always slept well. Like I said, I sleep like a brick. Yep. What yep. happened was my wife saying, you know, like, I snore. I snored so badly at night that it, it would keep her, wake her up. And she's a light sleeper. So that was not a good combination. But also the point where she was saying, I'm worried about you. It was starting to sound like the token, you know, the cutoff snore, like the guy's going to sleep oxygen deprived or something, which is weird because I never felt, you know, in my waking moments, I never felt any deprivation at all. But I did all that. They said, yes, it is. Doctor said, now, if you would lose about there, I guess there's different kinds of apnea. And he said, if you would lose weight, it would probably help your breathing channel. And that would be what it's about. So he said at the time, if you lost 20 or 25 pounds, well, I've lost double that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I still kept it going. The immediate thing I detected, well, Janet was a lot happier, but I also felt like I got an, this was 15 years ago, I felt like I got an entire, like another hour's worth of energy in the day. Yeah. Yeah. That was the so, immediate thing. And then as the years have gone by, you know, I don't know, but I still do use it when I'm, you know, just as a, as a habit. 
Yeah, the, the two things to look out for for sleep. So sleep apnea is where you, you are not getting enough oxygen um, during your sleep, and it, it really can mess with your sleep cycles. Um, we'll talk about this a little bit later, but um, sleep is, there's very different parts of sleep, and your mind works differently throughout the night when you sleep, and sleep apnea can disrupt it. Two big signs. One, Larry, you mentioned it, is snoring. If um, people are noticing that you're snoring very loudly, consistently, that could be a um, a warning sign. The other and that is weird, and the weird interrupted pattern. Yes. you know the real irregular. I mean, a normal right. kind of air through your nose is one thing, but yep, uh, yep. yes. Um, the other thing to take note of is if you are getting, you know, you're getting somewhere between six to eight hours of sleep, but you still don't feel well rested pretty mm-hmm. consistently that might be a sign of sleep apnea because your your sleep is very interrupted. You're really not getting the good quality deep sleep that we all need. So um, if if you're noticing those things, um, you can get a, a sleep study done as Larry did and sleep. The CPAPs are these sort of Darth Vader like machines that you wear that help you. Sorry to cross the streams here, uh, but I couldn't think of a good Star Trek analogy. It's a, it's a little bit like a Herosian helmet mask. There we go. Thank you, Larry. Larry, you always save the day. You always save me. In, in... The Star Trek universe is, even with all the wacky visuals, canon detours, <laughs> we've got way more than Star Wars has. Yeah. Um, we also got a great comment um, here from Twitch. Um, uh cairo 47 said my largest sleep issue now as usual has been late night events with american folks given that pacific (laughs) time is a nine hour nine hour difference to share so it's 9 a.m being in conflict with with my job sometimes needing meetings in the morning Mm -hmm. so larry this is something um as we are moving towards that optimistic future and global Global. cooperation yeah (laughs) cooperation across time zones this is a problem i hear from a lot of people is needing to coordinate across time zones and also work coming in at all hours of the day maybe you're working with people in the same time zone but now everyone's at home we don't really have good work-life separation Mm -hmm. people are emailing at all hours of the day so it's very hard to feel like you have a period where you can unwind because you might get an email at 10 11 p.m that needs action that needs action right right now i i had no idea i was so ahead of the curve this is my this has been my life since i worked on the fact files in the 90s (laughs) guys um no where you have bosses and cohorts all over the globe uh welcome but at least at that time it was like email but yeah we're right we're doing and i apologize on one hand as I have like built Trekland out, I've tried to, and we had Trekland live on Tuesdays at one and I built portal 47 and we add things for the Europe. I mean, trying to add venues so we can be global and take advantage of this technology. But at the same time, um, as, as Cairo, uh, was saying there, it's, I mean, I appreciate everybody being, I appreciate people here. We, us, we chose this time very specifically, hopefully it was more in people's sweet spot and it wasn't a weekday. It's a weekend. Hopefully to be easier, so we can still have a broad, a broad swath of time zones with us, and not be competing for time and attention and everything else that's gone virtual. But it is a, it's a, it's the downside of all this freedom <laughs> that we're having. But I, I appreciate everybody around the world who's jumped in for my shows and projects, as I'm sure. Uh, you, you're doing more and more live, though. I've tried. I've tried. Um, actually, yeah. everyone here has, has really helped me to learn how to do a live stream well. I'm just laughing, Larry, because when you said when you said that, it, I just heard Scotty. I gotta do it across a large swath of time zones, Captain. <laughs> it's my horrible Scotty impression. You oh, can all complain in the comments. An engineer, come on. <laughs> I'm a doctor, Larry, not a. Impressionist. Um, Brian says, um, I find that even without a set wake up time, it works best to set an alarm. So this is one of the things that um, we're also struggling with. Uh, I I mentioned this to the parents of teenagers and young adults that I've worked with, is if you don't have something you have to wake up for, it's very hard to wake up. Like, I would have parents who would say... Are we supposed to wake up for things we don't, when the days we don't have something... Well, I would have parents who <laughs> I would have parents who would say, "Look, he's waking up at 11 a.m., 12 p.m., 1 p.m. Like get him to wake up at 7 in the morning like all the adults are supposed to." And I would say, "Well, he's doesn't have school, doesn't have a job right now. 
how am I supposed to do that? It's it's very hard. You kind of need something to wake up for to wake up consistently on a regular basis. And for many of us, that's hard too. Like our schedules are so disrupted. So that's kind of disrupted sleep. This is what I love about sleep, folks. Sleep is everything. When you are struggling emotionally, you it'll show up in your sleep. Um, if you're thinking about stuff, stressed out about stuff, it might show up in your dreams. If you're not sleeping well, it impacts your memory, it impacts your attention. One of the things that we think sleep might be there for is to sort of like um, run the dishwasher at night to clean up. This is from animal-based research, and it's been applied to humans, but um, we don't have definitive research on humans about this, but um, sleep might clean up your brain and all the plaque that's built up and then literally flush it down the toilet by uh, flushing all the plaque uh, drown down the ventricles in your brain. So it might clean things up and we think maybe, we're not sure, but maybe dreams uh, have a way of cleaning up our memories, of integrating new memories with old ones, getting rid of stuff that we don't need anymore, helping us to solve problems. It's, it's a way our mind kind of works through stuff. So if you don't get a lot of that, you're you're more irritable the next day, harder to manage your emotions, your attention's not as great, your memory is not as great, your energy level is down, you're just an unpleasant person. Um, so I always tell people, uh, Larry, uh, that one of the greatest productivity hacks out there is is to get a good night of sleep. That's it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I always think of long – everything we're talking about about flushing, I've never thought about <laughs> stripping the plaque off the brain cells. But I think about like flushing the cares and worries and all that. I mean we already know that you know we need days off. Vacations, holidays are what regenerate us. <laughs> we don't need a Borg alcove. We <laughs> Hopefully we have a little more fun and take a vacation. But just in the that's, – that's like long term. That's like an annual or semi-annual flush mm -hmm. and if, even if it's not a big holiday you know we're not going to the mountains or the beach for a week or some resort or something or a new country but even if it's something smaller and even the week at the holidays you know whatever country you're in or whatever religion you have that that late december early january time when the whole world kind of shuts down and takes a group vacation you know it's like we do get it at least twice a year most people try to hopefully they're in a in a job at a situation where they can the kids are out of school they certainly do you know if it's an old school cycle but i'm just saying we've kind of built in socially culturally even if we don't have the biggest amount of you know job benefits and we can take a month off because we're you know horrible americans with we can't take a month off like they do in europe but even around the holidays in december january we have those kind of built-in social shutdown flushes like that, and I and we we yeah, just yeah. just about have to, and when we don't, we see what happens. But this idea of the nightly the nightly flush is just as healthy and just as important. <laughs> I've just always kind of assumed that. I, I kind of surprised there's not more. You know, welcome market. to Life Support Live, where we have a lot of toilet related analogies. Um, <laughs> some great comments from. Hey, I got you out of the dentist chair a minute ago with all no, the plaque. Yeah, thank you. So. <laughs> thank you. We'll just trade plaque for other bodily uh, oh, things. Okay. Um, Jared and Glenn um, both are talking about listening to different things that are helpful and soothing for, to fall asleep. So this is one of the things that um, I think is also very cool about sleep is sleep aids things that help you to fall asleep. Mm -hmm. There's so it's it's like idic, Larry. Infinite combinations and. Um, Infinite, uh, infinite, infinite diversity, diversity infinite and infinite, sleep aids. In, yeah, yeah. Again, sleep deprived, um, infinite diversity and infinite Idisa, combinations. Idisa. <laughs> like what's what's going to be soothing for me, and what's going to help my body to go into rest mode? Um, what's it called when the star? What what mode do you go in when the star is starship docks and you're kind of shutting things down? It would be like the opposite of red alert. What what would that be? Um, is it, oh, what is that? Is it gray mode? There's no yeah, right. It's, yeah, things things are yeah. Isn't there's there's a mode right that they put the starship into? Maybe well, I know. Well, there's red and yellow. There's blue mode when you're landing. If you've got landing legs like Voyager. Maybe uh, maybe our, our comments uh, section can help us out. Help us out, audience. But we all go into that mode. We all need to go to, into that mm -hmm. mode when we're fall, uh, getting ready to fall asleep. And um, different things are going to relax different people. So I love 
the set sa- there's this ambient warp core sound on youtube there's like oh, yes. tw- 24 hours of it and for me that's super soothing um, but for my mm-hmm. wife mm-hmm. No, that's yes mm-hmm. boom boom and there's ambient yes. bridge sound there's there's voyager ones or ds9 ones those those are super uh super soothing for me so w- we all need to find our own way of getting into gray mode or whatever uh whatever that um that mode is that we're talking about larry we've we've sort of flipped our segments today maybe maybe we, it's time to get into the counselor's log a little <laughs> Wait, bit we're not the ca- oh okay it was a big briefing it was a big briefing um a lot of logs okay um a lot of logs uh we always have a lot of logs and let's hope that is not a bathroom analogy um so getting into the counselor's log today this is a segment where we dive into a little bit more of the mental health behind these uh different episodes uh larry i kind of wanted to do like a um so not so much plaque and toilet uh, no 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 we save that for the briefing room um i wanted to do like quick reactions to some of these sleep episodes and then get uh get into some of the comments and reactions um so let's talk night terrors so the big thing here in night terrors (laughs) troy flying through space 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 in her in her dreams in her dreams in her dreams yeah 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 yeah. so i (laughs) <clears throat> I remember back in the day when I would when I would do my end of the interviews everyone for the companion and I didn't remember thinking I mean I was impressed with Night Terrors for using sleep in a sci-fi way. Yeah. Yeah. And it's almost like later it was it was ahead of Schisms it was fourth season fifth season but uh Schisms was later it was sixth seventh season. But I was impressed the time for the sleep angle not being, you know, an alien invasion. Which is what it was in Schisms. But this was like a a wonderful Star Trek, you know, we're not all out to get each other kind of moment among the alien cultures. It's just this alien captain got stuck in this weird phenomenon and it manifested. He's trying to send a distress signal and it manifests as sleep, um, you know, interruption in humans. And they and the Enterprise finds the smaller ship, the Bretagne, where the crew has all died or, they, you know, there's one. Uh, they have a Betazoid counselor. And that's the crew. Yep. That's the that's the pivot point. And so Troy's desperately trying. He's the one witness that hasn't died. Andrus Hagen. I always wonder. Ooh, he's a Scottish Betazoid. I always thought that was cool. Um, <laughs> but he's like the pivot point. But and then I hear later on everyone go, oh "My God, flying Troy!" And it, the crew was saying this. You know, the visual effects guys. But just as a drama, as a piece, take that out. I thought it was a pretty good use of sleep and and basically our. You know, what are the what do we say this? What are, what's the 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 coding term for it? What are the um, what are the weak spots in our entire sleep experience that can be, if not abused, at least manipulated or even accidentally, you know, what I'm saying, tacked. Yeah. yeah. To where to where we're vul- or What are our vulnerabilities in our entire sleep experience? And in this case, it wasn't nefarious; it was just accidental. And then she's able to, you know, counselor it out. And detective it out and figure it out and, and save some people. But in the meantime, everybody's sleep is sacrificed and they're going to and they worry that they're going to wake up. Now, whether that much sleep deprivation when you get into the REMs and all the stuff that it's enough to kill. Well, they went. So it was like a naked time. They were so sleep deprived, they became irrational and killed each other. And it's a reprise of the naked time again. And so, and that's where in the Voyager episode you do have aliens just running an exp- it's just our first contact experiment and not yeah. knowing that the same thing is happening with the Voyager crew that they're all getting so low but they cuz we've got smart federation people yeah everybody along the way figures out something is going on you know and just as in schisms too it takes a minute but everybody figures out that we can't be doing this jointly all the, it's not a mass delusional dream and you know the plot but I, I thought in each case that, and maybe, again, you tell me, maybe some of the cases, the specifics of sleep technology and sleep research were tweaked or, you know, as we do with all science. Oh, it wouldn't really do that. That's not really going to happen that way. But at least it gets people's mind at the very bottom of everything is Star Trek. At least it gets people's minds open to the concepts. Yeah, and there's then- there's two things that I that I want to say here. First, to respond to the comments, um, yes, I am wearing a red shirt. Uh, this is a NASA Mars rover shirt, and no, I am not scared to wear red because, as um, anyone who knows me knows, um, I, this is TNG red. 
This is not TOS red. <laughs> so just wanted to provide. Don't worry about me, folks. Um, is there a is there a gold metallic leaf insignia <laughs> non functional com badge on that shirt? No, he's totally safe. No, that. but I do have a little gold here right next to me, so that might be a little uh, danger point here. You're, you're um, generations. That was going to bring on more wrath than just. I know. I know. I know. Um, so the second thing I want to say is I, I actually remember watching this episode when it aired, Larry, and it was the first Night time. Terrors? Yeah, yeah, and it was the first time I got exposed to the words REM sleep. Mm. I I never had heard that before. Um, so I, I think it's a good episode for its time for exploring concepts that weren't really explored that much. And let's just talk about that a little bit. So uh, there are these different stages to sleep. Um, some people say there's uh, three stages and then rapid eye movement. Some people say four mm -hmm. and rapid eye movement. There's debate there. But early, which is what REM is. Which REM is, is, yeah, is, REM is rapid eye movement. Rapid eye movement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, what happens when you f start to fall asleep is you're still pretty alert. And um, you actually, you can hear things in your environment and they can be woven into your dreams. That's definitely possible. Mm -hmm. um, and um, with time, you go into a deeper stage of sleep. So this is one rule about napping is if you haven't gotten much sleep, then napping is actually a good thing to do. Um, in general, you want to stay away from it. But if you're sleep deprived, it's something you probably want to do. But you want to nap and wake up before you get into those deeper stages of sleep. When you get into deeper stages of sleep, it's harder to wake up. And if you wake up during that, you're going to probably feel more groggy. And then in about... You're going to pull a phlox mid-cycle. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, you don't want that. You want to let you the hibernation know. complete, just like uh, Flocks, what Flox needed. And then in about 90 minutes, you're uh, early on in sleep. You're going to, um, early on in the night, I should say, you're going to enter rapid eye movement sleep. And what's so cool about rapid eye movement sleep, REM sleep, is your mind looks like what it looks like when you're awake. Um, you're, there's, mm. um, I, I believe it's the pons. It's this area right, right above your, um, your spinal cord. It paralyzes <laughs> you. So there, the, the, your mind is sending out signals for you to walk and move and do all of these things, but your body's kind of paralyzed. Right, right. It's like a little nerve pinch. And so, um, you aren't moving, you aren't doing that. And this is actually why some people who sleepwalk have that problem is their minds aren't paralyzed in that, their bodies aren't paralyzed in that way. But what's so cool about REM is this is where a lot of the vivid dreaming happens. We dream, we dream all throughout the night, but the most vivid dreams happen during REM sleep. And what's so cool is your frontal lobe, the logical, the Spock part of your brain, the logical thinking part, it's sort of turned down. And the emotional part is turned way up. So your mind could be thinking, yeah, I'm totally flying right now. And your frontal lobe isn't there to say, uh, you can't fly. It's not possible. So um, I thought that was cool that these, at least these things are kind of explored. Now, everyone experiences REM sleep. There was a comment here. I don't remember my dreams. Maybe I don't have REM sleep. You do. Mm -hmm. Most it's it's actually common not to remember your dreams so much. We're more likely to remember our dreams if we're waking up a lot during the night or for not getting very um, very restful sleep. This is why many of us are having more vivid dreams right now. It's because we're our sleep is disrupted and we're probably waking up more, so we're remembering the dreams we're having more. So everyone would experience REM unless someone keeps waking you up before you enter REM sleep, and that is known as torture. So <laughs> that is a torture <laughs> um, torture method. So uh, hopefully no one is experiencing yes. that. So um, and some might say night terrors is also psychological torture. Watching that, but I think there was some good stuff there. Um, Larry, I don't let's think yeah, <laughs> let's There's talk walking topic. moments. Walking moments. Um, lucid dreaming is something that's coming up. Or I mean, even waking. Oh, walking. Wait, wa wait walk walk waking, 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 waking again. Ali Matu is sleep deprived. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, that's, that's the next episode. 
I'll what? name a two. It slipped a right. Yeah, help me, folks. Um, Larry is two, but won't admit it. Okay. <laughs> Larry is repressing. Um, so lucid dreaming is a very cool concept that ex- that is explored in um, waking moments. And so lucid dreaming is when um, some people used to think it's not a thing, but research seems to show it's very much a thing. This is when people become aware that they're dreaming and can exert a bit more control on their dreams. Now, there's there's debate about how much control you can actually exert. Like, the, the dream, no pun intended, is you learn this skill, and then you can do whatever you want. You can fly, you can soar, you can become superhuman, you can do whatever you want. You can be like a con! Um, I can't... See, that was bad, too. I didn't get the jaw movements, the Shatner... It's all yeah, in the jaw, can- that scene. He had more than one take, so don't worry about it. That's true. That's true. Yeah, that's true. Thank you, Larry. It took 50 Uh, takes to say, here it comes. But, you know, that was nothing (laughs) nothing compared to that. Larry is always a good source of mental health support for me during Life Support Live. (laughs) But um, lucid dreaming is an actual thing. Um, And you can can find ways to become more aware that you're dreaming. Uh, There's there's subtle things that you can do right before you fall asleep to become more aware. It's never really been something of interest to me. And honestly, I haven't had patients come to me wanting this. It's usually I just want to sleep better and more. Um, But it is something you can train yourself. I want better dreams. (laughs) But one of the things I take away from lucid dreaming is the things you also do right before your sleep can impact your sleep. So this is why if you have a lot of worries at night about the coronavirus, Mm -hmm. you might dream about it. But here's a little productivity hack, too, is if you're stuck on a problem, um, you can think about it before you go to sleep, and your mind will a little bit work itself out on that problem while you're sleeping. Or if you're trying to memorize information or study for a test, um, don't stay up all night studying, but do refresh that material right before you sleep, and it's likely that you're going to remember it better in the morning. So um, lucid dreaming, definitely a thing, maybe not to the degree that we see it in waking moments but it is definitely real i think that episode um like night terrors is tapping into real sleep psychology oh definitely yeah definitely well it's it's again that's what i said at the beginning sleep is one of those aspects of our existence that just goes so unexamined so most most of the time Unless you're having sleep issues and you have to find a good sleep doctor or someone that's knowledgeable to help you, but as a as a button to push <laughs> for science fiction or horror, you know, or some aspect of drama, it's one of those ooh, one of those unsettling, you know, it's like seeing a little a little uh, a little cherub who suddenly becomes evil. I mean, you know, yeah. it's like seeing yeah. a child. I mean, it's something that's so out of the norm. We expect monsters to come out of place, you know, a monster. But for sleep to become a doorway for, you know, a monster or something that's going to cause us harm is unsettling. And so when you've only got a TV budget in 44 <laughs> minutes, it's, it's um, you know, even now. I, I, um, I'm sitting there trying to think if we've had sleep. I guess not because they're staying pretty up on top of it. Uh, sleep hasn't really been used as a, as a as a device in the modern, in the Kurtzman shows. No. Except for a couple of times, and we, this overlaps really when we were talking about PTSD and Picard, but there's a lucid, we haven't mentioned the lucid waking moment dream of Picard in First Contact. Oh, oh, no, we haven't. Um, it's on my list, but it also, uh, that also reminds me of um, Picard is so dreaming about, Picard? well, Picard's oh. dreaming about data. Uh, that is the very first thing oh. we see in Star Trek Picard. And so um, this is uh, Picard. Actually, there's a lot of dream stuff with Picard. So First Contact is a great example, Larry, of how stress in the environment can impact your, your sleep. So if you are thinking about something a lot, like the Borg invasion of Earth and how you are not invited to because of your own personal trauma with the Borg right. and uh, all of that sort of stuff. And vulnerability. And uh, vulnerability, yeah. A tactical yeah. vulnerability as well as an emotional vulnerability. Yeah, yeah, add another trauma to Jean-Luc. You know, not only is it 
what he went through, the loss of identity, the guilt, the responsibility, but now this loss of agency and control uh, via mm-hmm. Starfleet. Uh, that could be a whole episode. We should do an episode, episode on that. I sometime. know. That could, that could be a whole episode. All right. All right. Check out episode Number one five. if you want more on Picard mental Number health. Number one. And I don't mean uh, Riker. No. Or, I mean episode one. <laughs> episode one. Um, but the things that you might be stressed about can play out in your dreams. That's very normal. That's very common. And then also recent things that have been happening um, right before you fall asleep can impact your dreams. We got a few comments about people who's um, uh, who have worked in um, emergency response and how heightened you might be to hearing certain sounds and they might wake you up. So that, that all that stuff can definitely happen. Um, I had more points about Picard... Um, uh, but I can't, I can't remember them right now. Um, while, you're, ta- while you're looking at them, oh, I was, yeah. was going to jump in the chat real yeah, fast and just say, it. old chat. Uh, so Linda, she says, LOL, and Marina says, that's not her bum on the Flying Troy. <laughs> so I had to look and see. It's Rose, a woman, a stunt woman named Rosine Hatem, or Hatem, so there you go. Right. Uh, there you go. Yes, it was the stunt flying woman, because they were up on strings and everything. I, I, and, uh, Chris, huh? Yeah, no, I think it was um, um, filming that sequence was actually scary, and because there was a harnessed kind of situation, it's it's not like it as easy it is as now to do those effects. Yeah, well, it's a lot. I, mean, I don't think this will ever come up, but the first time they shot Robbie doing Captain Proton flying with the rocket pack on, it's like Margaret yeah. Hamilton. The first time they did the Wicked Witch scene, the rocket pack was burning his butt. And burning his clothes, and he's up there screaming, and they just thought he was acting. Oh my god! And he's gosh. like, "No, no, get me down!" It's like it's burning me, and they were like, "Oh, oh!" So they never did any other flying rocket pack scenes for Captain Proton. Just like you never saw the Wicked Witch go out with a fireball after that first that first one in Munchkin City, which is a little off. That this is fire. That's another fear. We can get to that some week. <laughs> but uh, back to back to sleep. So I want to tell Kristoff, my good friend and Portales member, Kristoff, that yes, I took me two or three episodes, but I figured out our Twitch person, uh, Cairo, Ky- is uh, is Robert Cairo. Yes. Ah, there you go. I'm, I'm scanning the uh, the uh, chat here. Did you ever find your Picard notes? Um. Yeah, and I think I've already mentioned it. So uh, Linda says, yeah. um, my sleep is constantly disrupted and I very rarely remember dreams. And that's that's normal too. I mean, there's so much, so much diversity here based upon when you're waking up, in your sleep cycle, also like how late it is at night, um, how long you've been sleeping, the longer you've been sleeping, um, the more differences you have in how fast you're moving through through your sleep cycles. Sleep is, it's a, again, um, idic is, is here. Um, idic is a good way to think about sleep. It's, it's very uh, diverse, our experiences with it. And we're also now getting to, some of the comments um, are getting to this idea of, well, how do we improve oh. it? And we often think about improving the time of sleep, getting more hours. But what I like to talk about is, because that's also as Americans, we don't really value sleep and it's hard, it might be mm-hmm. hard to get those hours of sleep. But we can all do things to improve the quality of your sleep to make sure that the hours you're getting are the best they can be. So how can you change your environment to make it less likely that you wake up? How can you improve your ability to fall asleep faster? All those kind of things. We're going to be talking about that when we get to the away mission in in a little bit. It seems like, Larry, you got something you wanted to say. Oh, no, I'm just, I'm way behind on the chat. But Tim, uh, Tim Hans is reminding me that I should have remembered this uh, in our in our notes here because there are more shows. Uh, Night is a Voyager episode where they're right. going through a starless a star desert, and the the um, they're finding it hard to sleep while in this area of no stars. Which I don't know what the science is behind that. It's not like they're so dark that they're in the dark all the time. They had their own artificial illumination, but aboard ship. But yeah, that was a that was an odd. I remember it playing with. It was upsetting a lot of uh, natural cycles for everyone in the crew. Uh, and then they found the night aliens, which would be like subterranean, uh, you know, deep ocean. Um, I remember uh, that episode. Life forms, but it was the same thing only in space. Yeah, it was kind of a. Biz- I remember thinking at the time, like, with, how is that affecting 
sleep. But anyway. Phil said, um, I fall asleep while sitting in the afternoons particularly, but my mind, oh, I just uh, took it off the screen, but my mind is switching into a different reality, so I think I'm awake. Is this typical? So it it's very typical in that very first phase of falling asleep to have, I call it, this is not a scientific term, but I call it sleep logic, where you're not quite sure if you're awake, you're not quite sure if you're asleep, um, your thought process can get a little weird, um, it can feel like this altered state of consciousness, because it is a altered state of consciousness, so that's pretty normal and it's common, and if you are sleeping outside, hopefully you want to take a nap and you're desiring that, but if that's happening not intentionally, that's probably a sign that you're sleeping deprived if you fall asleep and there's loud sounds around you like a tv or loud cars going by and you're not wanting to fall asleep it's a sign you're sleep deprived and so maybe get more sleep or take some naps in that kind of situation well that's a question i was going to ask you because yeah. i know i've had this happen i it's funny the older i've gotten the less i've dream here's two things just to throw in the older i've gotten the less i remember dreams and the times when I do remember dreams vividly, I think I mentioned this once. It was if I'm awakened early to me, like if, but like after, like I've slept most of a night, but I'm woken, I'm awakened earlier than I meant to, so that I go back to sleep. Mm -hmm. um, and I have like an hour, which doesn't sound like you'd be in deep enough sleep unless it was just jarring enough. It's almost like it, it's a reset, a partial reset. Mm hmm. So that it's like, okay, well, you, you're not so jarred out of your cycle that you're not deep enough sleeping to, to do good dreaming. But it's like it, it, it flushed everything else, and you're only left with the last memory of what you dreamed. Yeah. Which is weird. And it, the other thing is, I know I've been in dreams, and I've heard other people say this too, where they're dreaming, and you, you remember thinking, wait a minute, this is a dream. Yes. And while you're dreaming. Yes, yes. Yes, um, super normal and common. And lucid dreaming is about increasing the chances of that happening, um, becoming aware of that you're dreaming. Yeah, I've had these dreams where um, I'm in it and I'm like, this is weird. And then I'm like, oh, I'm probably dreaming. And then I kind of, it just kind of moves forward. And it's, it's, it's weird like that. Oh, la di da, I'm dreaming now. Right. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, Larry, that gets to um, how how weird and diverse it is when you wake up, how you remember this stuff. It's, it's, there's, there's um, just a ton of diversity here. Um, I want to speak to schisms a little bit, um, TNG episode okay. schisms. And this is the one you mentioned where Riker and a few other the crew realize that they've been um, abducted by these aliens and experimented on. So this gets a little bit less into sleep, but more into consciousness. And mm -hmm. um, so I, I think I have an explanation for what's happening to Riker and, and, and crew here. There is something Seventh called... Seventh season writer's desperation? <laughs> that's, oh, no. that's one way. <laughs> that's one way to think about it. Uh, there is Seventh <laughs> season has some great episodes. Um, the Pegasus is one of my favorites. Uh, it's, it's a real gem there. But um, anesthesia awareness, being... Um, um, aware, even though you're under anesthesia, is a very, very, very rare situation. Um, estimates are about one in 1,000. Um, six, season six. Thank you, Larry. Um, and um, the thing here about, about anesthesia awareness is sometimes people don't get the right dose of anesthesia um, and they're not they're not put under enough or um, maybe they have other health conditions that complicate the anesthesia they're getting or it's an emergency situation but in those situations um, it's again very 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 rare but you might be more aware of what's happening around you and i think these aliens that were experimenting on the crew had a very poor understanding of human physiology and alpha quadrant physiology and so they weren't giving Riker at all a good dose of the anesthesia and so they were left a little aware of what was happening around them which led to Troy figuring this out which led to them solving data I think solves that problem um, I'm guessing it's data because data usually probably always solves the problems but that's actually a thing it can happen very rare but it is actually a thing mm. Uh, I'm just looking here. So, uh, Raceland53, one of our early Twitch followers, 
said, and I don't know how long this would take, but maybe in 50 words or less, could you explain the different types of brain waves and how they work to help you sleep and recharge? Uh, like, yeah, is there so, four or five categories just in a in a layman way? There's alpha and beta waves, and so it's um, what's what's really it, it, when you have um, these sensors that are measuring sleep waves or, or and these different brain waves, um, you get a lot of really complicated data out of that, and you need software to sort of clean it up and help you determine what's happening here, um, but. W- Basically, what what the waves show us is what kind of activity is going on in the brain. And uh, what we see is a slowing down of activity um, as as sleep is starting. And then you get to rapid eye movement, and the activity in the brain at that point looks exactly like activity when you're awake. And then you get out of rapid eye movement sleep and things start to slow down again. So just think about it as, as uh, I think the easiest way to think about it is there's the slowing down and the rapid firing. It's called rapid eye movement actually because your eyes are moving very quickly. And we, we know lucid dreaming is probably a thing because people who report lucid dreaming, their eyes are not moving in a more of a random way. They're moving a little bit more deliberately so people are controlling it more. So that's think about that. There's a few different things that you can pick up on brainwave activity. My favorite is something called the K complex. And this is, um, it's usually when your brain is reacting to a sound in the environment. It kind of looks like a K on that brainwave um, uh, thing. So, yeah, that's the basics that I would say about that one. Um, I got two more, um, one more episode I want to talk, or one more Star Trek sleep fact I want to talk about. And then I want to get into the K3 factor. Um, Species 8472 in the Jem'Hadar, they don't sleep. They don't sleep. So is that a thing? Um, And the answer is kind of, yes. So if you look at dolphins and um, uh, other animals, but dolphins are my favorite example because they're super cute. And um, I was a big Sequest DSV fan. So I always think of Darwin, Darwin sleep. No, Darwin does not sleep. Darwin sleeps with- Have you seen the dolphins? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Um, This is- also, yeah. the Life Support Live, where Ali does a bunch of bad impressions, apparently. Um, please rate, what's the worst impression I did today? Scotty? Darwin? Or whatever my third one was. McCoy. Um, um, dol- dolphins sleep with half of their brain. And this allows them to, um, to get air as needed and still be a little bit more alert. But half of their brain is asleep at a time. So... Um, Sleep in dolphins just looks differently. It's more like a period of um, of rest, which is actually what sleep is like in sharks as well. Sharks and fish, they don't sleep like us. They have periods of more alertness and periods of more restfulness. Um, and some some sharks they group together and they don't really swim. It's it's a it's a misnomer that sharks always have to swim in order to stay alive. Um, but they they have periods of rest and periods of more activity. So there's there's a lot of diversity, just like with bears and hibernation. And there's some animals that can um, go into an even deeper state of hibernation. There's a lot of idic again. Itic in in our in all the species on well, Earth and on how they sleep. There you go again using this Earth Earthophile uh, <laughs> terrophile uh, filter <laughs> on things. Because well, it, just to say that of those two species we just mentioned, so species A four seven two comes from fluidic space. Right. So who knows what the evolutionary miasma of that is? And the Jemadar were genetically bred. I right. mean, they were. They were eugenically created. So the founders said, we want the super soldier. What's the best super soldier? They don't need rest. So right. that was just a quality. And I guess, I don't know, that's in the Ketra cell white. That <laughs> They just stay, you know, rejuvenate. They do get old and yeah. slow down. And yeah. they have honored elders and, you know, that whatever, if they don't die in battle. So. Well, and they have a massive metabolism too, right? From from birth to uh, adult is was it days or weeks in that Deep Space Nine episode? The, the gem, I think it was called the Gem Hadar, or no, 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 it was called which one? The very the um, where they discover this boy 
who has been left behind in some kind of canister and they start raising the boy and then they quickly the, the learn, young, yeah, and they Jemadar quickly learn it's yes. a Jemadar. That, it happened in days, if I remember, that the, uh, mm-hmm. maybe a couple of well, weeks. Well, all like kids grow up in days. Don't you know that? It's, <laughs> otherwise, what's the point? It goes in a whoosh, flash, a, a flash of a Q wrist there. Um, so um, let's go to K3. Um, if that's okay with oh, you, Larry, let's, that's let's fine. Get to I K3 just wanted factor. to, um, do we have, do we have the image or, or... Uh, you just saw it. Your face was just covered with it. I'm covering no, no, it again. The image I sent you for. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me pull it up. Let me pull I up can, the well, image. Before you do. So in there's, uh, so night terrors, it, it's kind of funny cause this is not a blooper, but it's a why at the end of night terrors, it's kind of like, Oh, well, all's well that ends well. We, we got out of this and, um, Everything's fine, and schisms is the same way. It was like, oh well, well we saw we stopped this Solanogen alien invasion from another dimension, kind of thing with the the beauty of our dreams and our sleep there in our you know, and that's not true. They didn't. Yes, they had a crewman named um, Crewman Hagler who was abducted, and one of the experiments they did made his blood coagulate, and he dies. And there there's a uh, there's a health alarm, and they all come running down to his quarters, and poor Lieutenant Hagler. You know, falls out of his door and he's stupefied. And here's Crusher and Riker and Picard to all come in and, and say he's dead, Jim, for no particular reason. So my K three factor is purely a fun one this week. It's just that if you, you get fun. one second, you get one second, even more funner than most. You get one second to glance at his door. Okay, now you can run it. Run it. And look, he's got his uh, door number is uh, forty seven. So you know, just if you're living in a quarters with forty seven in the number, just. Watch out for the Solanogen alien <laughs> and their coagulant blood thing when you're kidnapped in your sleep through your dreams. That's that's all I'm saying. There's this, your K3. This is not a K3 factor because this is not tying into TOS, but there's a question from Dan. There's or a statement from Dan. There are supposedly dolphins in oh, the yes. Enterprise D too. Really? The Enterprise D has like everything. It's not it, this is well, a cruise they, they ship. Have it's dolphins not. and whales. They have dolphins and whales. No, There's they don't a, have whales. There's there be whales here, Larry. Any whales? Many. I forget what the breed is. So the tech manuals. It was a joke. So it's a multi-layered thing. So Mike and Rick, and I don't mean Berman and Pillar. I mean the real ones, yeah. uh, Okuda and Sternbach. <laughs> um, in the tech manual, talk about there's some dedicated rooms that are set up with aquatic environments, water, for dolphins and whales as navigational aids. Okay. <laughs> That's in the so that was brought into the blue. So Rick put them in the blueprints. There's one or two in jokes. Oh. Those door stickers, the door stickers we just saw. I have some of them that yeah. say Tercy off op, or uh, Cetacean Ops, and like the little thing over there instead of the name, and and Tercy Ops Ward. And then there's I was laughing earlier, but there's the scene where somebody says, "Has uh, can I show? Have you seen the dolphins?" Yeah. <laughs> I think it's a Jordy line. I always want to say it's it's Troy, but I think it's a Jordy line. Have you seen the dolphins? Like they're killing time. It's a throwaway line. Oh my god! But it was just, it's almost like this little sub, uh, you know, subtextual little joke that they, it's almost like a forty-seven. Okay. Bit. Okay. Okay. The dolphins and the whales on the yeah, and so a lot of people have taken that and run with it over the years. There was a yeah. Uh, people have had a lot of fun with that. I, so. I was going to fact check you by pulling out my technical manual right now, but I, I have a very, um, uh, I think it's probably a real memory, but who knows? Um, I have a memory as a child uh, reading the tech manual and going, what? There's whales? Because I do remember the map. I remember seeing yeah, a map. Whales. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, two important questions here. Um, but this has nothing to do with sleep, but, uh, you know. Or a couple of points. Um Jared, you know Jared, Jared, let me know if it's Jared or Jared. I want to make sure I'm, I'm Jared. Saying, Jared? Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, Jared, let me know if I'm getting that wrong because I always appreciate your comments and I appreciate your honesty. Hey, Ali, when the time comes and you think to yourself, I might try reading audiobooks for a living, don't do it. Point take it. I will stick to video here. Um, and Tim says, how does Odo sleep while in a liquid state in his bucket? So I'm going to guess, but I'm going to turn it over to uh, Dr. Trek here because he might know better. So um, one theme that we have with, again, this is my Terran bias here, is uh, <laughs> when um, 
um, all animals have these periods of more alertness and more rest. So I'm guessing Odo's matrix, um, there comes a time where it's less strong and it needs to revert to its natural state. Mm -hmm. So that is what sleep is for Odo. He might be consciously aware, but just lose the ability to control his matrix. And that's probably why he needs a bucket, because on his natural planet, um, they are in that the Great Link. They're all just sort of like this big ocean. And if he did that, he'd be spread out all over the room. And like, let's say Starfleet security comes in and they like step all over him. That wouldn't be good. Um, so I think that's what's happening to his sleep. Uh, and then Dr. they're Trek. sliding and falling over. And it's yeah, it would be. And then he wakes up and then he's remembering his weird weird dreams about Kira and and the founders and it's you know it's a big mess you don't want that Dr. Trek what say you uh, does I, that sound right to you well oh wait I've got to get used to I got yeah that. watch out for my poke if, if you're gonna point at me I've got to do that <laughs> um no that makes I was just thinking the the whole point of it you know he got to the point where he didn't do the bucket well he had he would solid form for a while so I would think while he was in solid form and he's commenting about eating and drinking and all that, and 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 using the excretory function. Um, <laughs> that sleep would be one of his solids, you know, uh, experiments that he had to experience. But when he's in his bucket form, back when he's in home goo, um, I, I totally think that. Yeah, it, the by definition, he's he's resting, he's holding his shape and resting in the bucket. So that yeah. would be all things. Yeah, it's the same thing as when Seven is in regeneration mode, in in her alcove. It's like it's it's that's how they I mean what is rest? I mean our brain is yeah. I don't know what it, I mean physically sleeping is when we don't wear our bodies out in 10 years. I mean, you know, or 15 years. So physically just as a as a as a collection of material, we don't wear it out. But then all this thing that since we have this advanced brain and all these life forms along the spectrum like what has grown and evolved from the time we were cells that in our resting state, this all this other stuff has just grown up around it, right? Yep, yep. I mean, has and, anybody? And, that's like the history of sleep evolution. Well, I don't well, know. Well, if, if you if you look at um, if you look at the next generation episode, the chase that explains why uh, so many of the aliens look yeah. alike, it's a great way of explaining the limitations of the budget of of the makeup department. But we all sort of evolved from the seeds that were planted by this uh, this other race. Um, it, bipedal humanoids, yeah. Right. <laughs> if you think about that, it makes sense that we would, um, in Star Trek canon, we would share some similar aspects of sleeping. And, you know, all life here is related in, in some ways. And so um, it makes sense that we all share this period of more rest and more alertness. Um, uh, Jared also says the episode of DS9 where Odo and Luwaxan and the turbo lift was easily the best moment for Luwaxan ever. That is a beautiful episode. I love that episode. Um, that um, the two of them together in that moment just brought so much to both of those characters. Uh, Jared, I completely agree with you here um larry i think we should um close up the k3 factor close up those uh doors and um get into the away mission people, for this week. we've had an awful lot of people i mean i i would like to think and i said i again and folks everybody's been chatting great but we do have the skype if you want to come on and talk yeah. about your sleep experience or question you can come on live with us we'll we'll hit we'll open some hailing frequencies in a minute but just bear in mind that that's available but uh, Ali's away mission briefing here is, is yeah, so, uh, so the takeaways we, are great. You know, um, we all need a sleep protocol. And we all need that gray alert or status gray or whatever it's called uh, that we completely forgot what it is, Larry. Um, but we all need a sleep protocol. And so what I mean by that is we need, in much the same way that we have in Star Trek, these different protocols that are engaged, we need a sequence of activities that we regularly do every night for a few reasons. One, our minds are association machines. They, um, When one thing is triggered, our, our mind 
brain gets ready for that and already starts changing um, and preparing ourselves. So we all need to do certain things every night that uh, tell our body to start calming itself down and start resting. And so one thing to think about is what is your nighttime routine? What can you consistently do that, that helps your body to start winding down? For some of you, it might be watching a rerun of Star Trek. That's totally cool. If it relaxes you down. We've been seeing a lot great. of this in the chat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A lot of people watching other kinds of shows too. One of my patients actually found out I was um, a big Trekkie, and so we talked a lot about Star Trek and therapy, like how it relates to all the skills we're working on. And I remember him saying, yeah, watching Star Trek calms me down, but my problem is then I go on Reddit and I get involved in all these debates about, well, why wasn't Cisco commanding the Defiant at, um, at the first contact um, encounter? And then um, my mind gets all active, and then I want to debate and discuss. So, like, we need activities that wind turn. us down. Yeah, t- turn things down and not turn Watch. things up. Absolutely. So what does that mean? Well, physical activity during the day might be a good way to uh, make it easier for for you to fall asleep. Um, Limiting caffeine, alcohol, tobacco, nicotine, that's really important. Some kind of relaxation right before. I've actually been getting a lot out of doing stretching. I've been experiencing a lot of back pain and I've been on my legs a lot, actually running around with my daughter. So uh, running around after her, I should say, or her running around after me. So um, stretching can be a good one if you're overwhelmed by a lot of thoughts right before you go to sleep journaling might be helpful writing some of those thoughts down and then telling yourself i will tackle this tomorrow at this time or again some kind of physical activity that gets you more plugged in into your body and less plugged in with your mind um, with your mind sounds relaxing sounds like the warp core sounds those are a big one for me um one last thing i want to say is um or two last things i want to say only going to sleep when you're sleepy. This is very important. Um, your mind's an association machine. We want the bed to largely only be associated with rest and restful activities um, or activities that make you feel rest or restful afterwards. I'll, I'll leave the rest to your imagination. But if you are in bed and you can't fall asleep and you're very alert, get out of bed. Do something that does calm you, that, that relaxes you. Calm or wear you yes. down. Yes, yeah. and then go back into bed. So that is one of the best sleep hacks I can I can tell you. The last thing is, um, there's always something we can do to improve the quality of your sleep. Blackout curtains, sleep aids, white noise machines. Um, uh, if you can't get blackout curtains, a sleep mask that you can wear that can block out light. Um, experiment, try. Don't give up if it doesn't work once. In my next video, I try a number. I I actually go to a psychologist get her advice, try those things out. Some things work for me, some things don't. It takes a little bit of experimentation, but you can develop your sleep sleep protocol. And the protocol that works for you now might be very different than what was working for you before coronavirus. So we all need to try and experiment. Well, the whole thing about what you finally said, white noise, my wife has done that for years, and she she's she she will get in a binge of a year or two. And we've seen people in the comments. <laughs> we have the match game watchers. We've got people who do watch Star Trek, and it's it's the thing is what my what my wife does is she does not pick she intentionally picks no brainer shows. If it's mm. something that's new and stimulating, that's not what she wants. So she's gone inside ten years ago. She it drives everybody else crazy, but. It's not because she's watching it to be watching it. She's watching it to go to sleep with. Her favorite, her favorite next gen or favorite Star Trek episode ever to go to sleep with for some reason was para- was Parallels, which she always called oh, multiple wars. I the love Parallels. Show, for some reason, that was perfect for her. Yeah. To but like you said, if you find something, go to sleep. But she went through like two or three years where she watched Firefly constantly. Yeah. The yeah, last yeah. couple of years, it's been Murder in Paradise, the BBC detective dramedy that's set in the caribbean she's it's not about watching the shows because you the whole point is something she is so familiar with that she's not paying attention to it and a lot of people do that they do that during work hours and a lot of people are doing that to go to sleep but that's it's like if you don't have a fancy white noise machine that's white noise for her and for a lot of people Um, or or match game reruns or whatever 
Uh, <laughs> Linda has a great point here about breathing. For some people, um, breathing exercises can help. And the most important, we can you can get lost in what kind of breathing and how much. And should I do 4-7 breathing or should I do deep diaphragmatic breathing? The most important part seems to be slowing down your breathing because uh, uh, slow breathing um, does trigger your parasympathetic nervous system, which calms your body down. The sympathetic nervous system activates it. Parasympathetic calms it down. So just slowing down your breathing can be a big, big source of help there. For some people, again, it just makes them more nervous to do that. Um, here's, a, here's a question, and I'm way back in the chat, so I'm back. I'm trying to rapidly catch up. Larry Rose, works from the top Rose. down, and I work from the bottom up. And we oh, sometimes we meet go. in the middle, and sometimes we just pass each other <laughs> and then we have the golden spike ceremony right there right um so that's for the history folks uh so rose on youtube yeah. is saying uh, i it's i'm pulling this out of context but i don't know what she means she's saying but what do you do to fill the day and what happens what it what happens when the outside the noise noisy people cars people yelling and you want to take that cat nap, or even at night if you're yeah. in a busy place. And I'm I'm just thinking yep. earplugs. Yep. Yeah, is about what you can uh, do. Yeah, Rose, this is a great question, and you got to experiment. So I am someone who is very sensitive to sounds, um, to the point where certain sounds really just grind my gears. Um, the sound of my wife flossing at bedtime or right before bedtime. It's it's. Uh, it's it's almost a misophonia reaction that I have. Misophonia is hatred of sounds. Um, it's oh my gosh! I can I can I can hear the plaque being get, getting back to cl plaque. I can That's... hear it. Yeah. So I have to it not get be... to your brain cell. Oh can... oh. Mm. Um, so I have to be in a different room. Or if I can't, I have to listen to soothing sounds. Um, someone mentioned the Yosemite webcam. Um, Kai, uh, Cairo mentioned the Yosemite Falls can mm. calm you. So one one thing is um, reduce your exposure to those sounds. The second thing is listen to something that is soothing to you or uh, try out noise-canceling headphones or just earplugs that go in. Um, another tip that I've, I've found very helpful if I'm sleeping like in a hotel in a very noisy environment, and I always carry these with me, is earplugs, and if that's not enough, headphones on top of those mm -hmm. earplugs. Um, and if that's not enough, turn the white noise on them. And if that's not enough, some soothing white noise sound in there can be helpful um, as well. So uh, give yourself permission to avoid those sounds or to block them out if you can, um, that can be that can be very helpful. Um, Rebecca said, "I watch a Disney Channel fluff in bed to fall asleep." Rebecca, if you're a Disney fan, if you have Disney Plus, they just released. Um, I think it's called Zenimation, which is just a series of beautiful, serene visuals from their different mm. movies and just soothing sounds and it's all designed just to help you get more calm and i think it's they're picking up on how hard it is for people to sleep so they've made the series it's wonderful check it out i think you might like it tim is saying it's the old counting sheep he says if i have trouble sleeping at night i just count down from 100 to zero slowly until yeah. i get bored yeah and if i actually get to zero i just start again and it works every time yep well obviously tim or you never would have slept in your life <laughs> <laughs> and Glenn here says breathing exercises make me more anxious rather than calming my uh, calming me down. So I think of something completely different. Yeah. So everyone's a little bit different here. So Glenn, maybe visualization helps you. So if that's something that I used to do all the time before coronavirus. I would actually envision a better future for me and my family. Now it's hard for me to do that. So now I time travel backwards. Now I think of our wedding day, and that actually calms me down and helps me to uh, to fall asleep. So we all need different exercises. Um, uh, Tim asked, does your wife know of your dislike for her teeth flossing? Yes. She knows. <laughs> it's she a knows. healthy marriage. It's she knows exactly. <laughs> you know, one of the things about... Um, this is not the marriage theory therapy episode, but one of the things that I've learned is so important when you have conflict with a loved one is to figure out what's the conflict and how to solve it as opposed to assigning blame. Um, you know, it's not her fault that, she, <laughs> that the sound is annoying me. It's also not necessarily my fault either, but it is a conflict. And so um, if she sees me put on headphones 
when she's flossing, she knows why. And she's also very sensitive to it. And she tries not to do it in a place where I'm really trying to focus on something. She might do it in a different room or she might do it in the room with me. She, it, and here's, here's the kicker, Larry. You know what flossing does for her? It calms her down. It's part of her sleep protocol. So okay. here we are, two very different wired people right. trying to coexist. Um, so yeah, she knows, and we, we try to work through that conflict. Well, I not to be you know a fake doctor here or anything, but it's the <laughs> important thing here. The bottom, apart from the details, the important thing is it's out in the open, and it's not it's not emotionalized. It's not you know, and it's not festering. Yes, it's not yeah. Resting. The simplest little tiny thing. That's why, but it's great writing and drama and comedy when you see two people and somebody ex finally explodes over some right. tiny little thing and it's like, really? That? And it's yeah. like, well, it's not that. It's just the fact that I sat on it for 50 years or the, well, 20 years. Well, that's some of the research on um, uh, <laughs> uh, relationships that end um, suggests that they experience actually less conflict. Because they talk about it less, the problems become a bigger deal, and then there mm -hmm. are those moments of uh, of a of a warp core breach uh, <laughs> that happen. Um, when you let, let the little things go away. But anyway, but back to sleep. So Sean, my good friend Sean, says I use clinical hypnotherapy, which I yeah. have been doing for many years for health reasons, but I also use it to imagine exploring the universe in an enterprise. Yeah, um, so the um, so there's there's two things there. So uh, real hypnosis, it's not about getting people to do things they don't want to do. You can't do that. Real hypnosis is a self-driven deep state of relaxation, and some mm -hmm. people are better at doing it than others. Um, some people are very very good at visualization and putting themselves into different places. We all can do it to some degree, especially if we're able to tap into sensory details. Uh, but some people are better at that, and for those people, visuals <laughs> work. Real visualization works really well and can be really soothing. Uh, Larry, well, I, so we've got. So I want to. I want to do a quick shout out. Thank you to Clayton yeah. who went over to YouTube, so Bill and Rose wouldn't be alone. Oh, and there's actually people in the chats over there, and they've got a, apparently we have a hundred percent like on YouTube right now. But Clayton at one point said he's explored the dream landscape quite a bit, also. It's like a constantly updated video game that's being expanded daily, which all that – I fly over forests through suburbs and do strange things. But that also reminds me getting us back to the whole Borg Unimatrix. Yes. Yeah, thing. yeah, absolutely. And one thing real quick we never mentioned, but I want to make sure and make sure we do it. The whole – do androids dream of electric birds? I mean the whole thing of sheep, data's sheep, dreaming. Sheep, sheep, sheep. Do they dream of so electric this is, sheep? This is why we're going to have to have a whole episode just about dreams and – Oh yeah, yeah. No, we totally, we totally can. Uh, Larry, I think we're in the hailing frequencies. I think they've, yeah, they're think open. They've they, they've been, the, they're wide open. Um, the comments we're getting. Uh, you all are. These comments are amazing. Like I am, I am having um, so much fun connecting with you all today and and learning about your experience. We've got some. Um, We've got some. We've had some con experience. Con experiences here. Uh, Daniel says again, bad impressions. Um, I remember I was at a con at night. The fire alarm went off, and I thought I was in my own bedroom and spent ten seconds trying to get out. Um, yeah, so uh, that can definitely happen. Jared says I was at Gallifrey One once when the SWAT team stormed the hotel. Not sure if Larry was there. Larry, were you there? Did that happen? <laughs> I you? don't think. so. So I'm only I don't stay the night at, at Gallifrey. I drive down and back. It's here now. It's the big hookon here in Los Angeles. Um, but, uh, and yeah. Rose has a follow up here. Here's a dilemma. Every 55 seconds, there's a beep from a fire alarm and don't have good neighbors. Rose, a, a patient of mine struggled with that so much they lived in a very large apartment building in new york city and there was some battery was dying on the fire alarm and it was such a big challenge for them um i definitely feel your pain it's happened to, yeah it's happened to larry it's happened to me uh that mm -hmm. is a massive frustration so this is where this is you got two things one is, can you solve this problem in any way by um, either getting them to change their battery, taking care of the fire alarm? Sounds like you've probably tried that because you say you don't have good neighbors. Second thing is, I would, I would invest in um, a white noise machine if you can. Not one of the fake ones that you turn 
on and it produces a digital sound. One of the real ones that swooshes around and produces the real sound, if you can't get one of those or you can't get access to it, if you have a fan, use that, turn the fan on, you can point it towards away from you. The fan will produce a lot of that similar kind of sound and try the headphones and then maybe put on one of those soothing bridge ambient noise sounds as well see if you can drown it out so if you can't solve the problem then drown it out but i i have a lot of empathy for you that is uh, and sympathy it is a very hard situation hey i'm just i the, our youtube is taking off i'm saying i want to say hello to Catherine, and hello to punk rock <laughs> <laughs> who says original star trek knocks me out constantly is that in a good way or for <laughs> I think he means sleeping? Could wow, mean. this is amazing. It Look at those mean. colors. I don't think that's what he means. I think he means it knocks him out to go to sleep. You know the <laughs> thing about um, TOS, Larry, is how long were the episodes? 50 minutes? 55 minutes? May, no, they're like 48. Like a modern, sh like the next gens are like 44, and I think they were 48 or 52. They're and, a lot longer. Though. And our last... Yeah televised uh non-stream star trek was enterprise those episodes were closer to 40 i think uh th or 28 something like that 28 no it's no, more I than no, <laughs> <laughs> the, so over time um advertising has taken out a larger mm -hmm. chunk of one hour shows and if you look at tos it was a slower paced show and the editing was n editing was definitely not as bu as bullet speed as Star Trek Discovery but even compared to Enterprise or Deep Space 9 the editing is slower so um, for a lot of modern audiences i think it TOS can be just a, a difficult thing to get into as much as other shows from that era or if you even go farther back to the 50s shows just moved at a different pace back then yeah, I don't know how we got off on this, but I was going to say a lot of younger people just watch Next Generation, and it seems like it's moving. I mean, the whole yeah. pace of a master shot, close up, close up, master shot, close up, close up. Right. That, I mean, there's so much now with moving cameras where things are whip panning around, and you're just on a on a steady cam, and it's yep. just follow. How we how we be, we went to um, filming boldly. This is what <laughs> we do. Time. This is why we people just tune in. No one know, knows but, what we're going to talk about, <laughs> including Dr. Trek and Dr. Ali. <laughs> I, but I have seen comments recently where younger people, younger fans, are sincerely talking about... I talked on this on Tuesday's Live one time at 1 p.m. Pacific on Tuesday on Facebook. Um, about it was, it was almost like painful because I could see them sincerely yeah. wanting to be good Star Trek fans. Yeah, and they just had never watched it. It wasn't part of their growing up, you yeah. know. But you know, Voyager or Inter or Discovery was their first trek or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And they were the Kelvin movies, and they were going back because they knew that's where it started, and they knew that. You know, and it's like they'll say, "I only watch two or three minutes, and I can't. I like I want to, but I can't take it." And yeah. I'm, I'm thinking, well, part of, like, do you ever watch black and white movies? Have you ever seen? Yeah, yeah. So it's. I think some of that is just getting a little more life. It's nothing at all. But, it's, and I admire I, them for trying and being honest, but I think a little more life experience will help them. Well, I think know. about it in terms of language. Films <laughs> are language, and they're, they're like other forms of art, like literature. You don't jump mm -hmm. into war and peace. You don't, you know, you like, you need to work up these muscles to mm -hmm. be able to experience these different aspects of art. And um, this is also, you know, this is previewing a future episode, but this is why I think Star Trek needs to be constantly reinvented and we need to have lots of different forms of Star Trek because we need to have modern stories told in a modern way um, to make it accessible to new and different audiences. Um, Libby says, speaking of cons, when I can't sleep, I remind myself I get very little sleep at cons and still function. It helps me realize I need to relax about it. I usually end up falling asleep eventually. Libby, mwah, I need to put that on a t-shirt. This, um, this is something I talk about all the time is sometimes we get so stressed. I can't fall asleep. We look at the clock, blah, blah. What What's going to happen? I can't fall asleep. And the reality is you're not going to feel your best the next day and you're probably going to be OK. You'll get through the day. So anything that can reduce some of the stress of falling asleep will probably actually help you to fall asleep. So I love that comment, Libby. Thank you so much for sharing that. Hey, I'm, I'm, big, I'm back in the chat here, back in the chat room again. Um, <laughs> 
Not, now it's lounge that, singing oh. with uh, yeah, Dr. Oh, you Coach. know, the Autry Museum is right down the street here. Vic's, uh, Vic has nothing on, on Larry Nemechek. Back where a friend meets a friend. Okay, so Night Angel on Twitch. We have a good Twitch group today. Yeah, Not we so much my live experiment the other day for Tuesday Live where we had the 12-year-old <laughs> kids wondering what's going on. But we've got a good group in Twitch today. Night Angel DK is saying... I have lucid dreaming relatively often. I'm aware I am dreaming, and I can change small bits of the story, and those are often the dreams that I remember the best when I wake up. Mm. Mm-hmm. Just throwing that in the mix. Um, um, uh, Glenn says, when I go back and watch TOS episodes, I find that while the pacing is slower than of today's shows, it's actually faster than other shows of the day, or even some as of the late 90s. And I think that's absolutely true. It was, you know, the wagon train to the stars. Um, it was, uh, compared to the other shows of that era, uh, things were moving fast in Star Trek. Uh, they were moving I, I, that's at That's one thing speed. I said, too. To, yeah, I was going to say, um, that's one thing I would tell those people. The one thing I would offer, because I'm not going to tell people, you sit down and you watch that, damn it, because you need to. <laughs> you can't do that. And people, but I admired the people who were sincerely trying and honest enough to say, I'm really trying. And the one thing I would say is, uh, I wish, you know, we have a lot of retro TV channels on now. And there's one reason why Star Trek, there's a re- reason why every show that ever made was not a classic, because some shows are crap. And some shows are middling, and some shows are really standouts. Yeah. And even the ones that still look dated after a while, that were a revolution, like All in the Family or Hill Street Blues or or what it laughing, they were a, they were a revolution in their time, and they're fun to watch now. But you really, if like look, let's look at everything else that was on prime time yeah. at that same time slot, and compare it to original series in the '60s, yeah. and you go, oh my god, <laughs> this is like yes, it is warp speed ahead of what else was on at the time well, I, so, um lost in space um but i think lost in space was 30 minutes if i i don't think it was an oops, hour no it was an hour it was an hour um it was an hour. well it, i think lost in space just had a very different pacing um the twilight zone i would say was also um was well paced for its era too like mm-hmm. star trek the twilight zone um told a very very quick story um but I think a lot of audiences now find it to be very slow. Two comments about cons here. Uh, Cairo says, I usually sleep for short times, but very well at cons. Uh, Cairo, my guess is it's probably because all the physical activity, all the walking you're getting in. Uh, we all walk like miles at a big con and we walk, we're on our, our feet yes. a lot at, uh, even at a small con. But then the comment that makes me sad, Bill, future historians watching this will say con. What's a con? I hope uh, we survive. Con survived the computer revolution. I think they'll survive Corona. I think they'll survive. Pandemic. We're gonna want to get connected mm-hmm. as a community and come back together again. It's going to happen. It might be different, but it will happen. Um, maybe the scale will be different. We'll see. It, they'll they'll be back in in some form. And until then. We have life support um, to stay connected. We have life support. We have Portal 47, which is a mini-con all year long. We do. Folks, we has, do. It, I hear it's got a special right now. Uh, it has a special <laughs> right now. LarryNimichuk.com slash simple 342. Yes, everybody. Um, but Bill also says post-pandemic cons will only happen at home when everyone is wearing their VR helmet. Um, I would love to get good VR technology so we can, um, we could be having this, as someone said last week, we could be having our life support live retreat, um, but we could do it virtually. (laughs) Um, Hey, Bill, just to say real quick, if you've actually got a VR helmet, uh, Roddenberry has a Roddenberry VR uh, theater and they're connected with Sansar and at least once a month they have a Sansar. Like I've done a Sansar event virtually a couple of times. Uh, but if you're if anybody out there who's watching this and has a VR helmet, just just saying, there's a fun Star Trek thing you can you can do at least once a month in some Star Trek thing. Scott says Lost in Space just felt like two hours. I agree with you. I wasn't a huge no. fan. I was especially if you're huge. not eight. 
Yeah, I mean, <laughs> stakes. Like eight year, a ten year old. Then yeah, okay. the stakes. I mean, this is what made Star Trek so. We could get into. The, we could get lost in this conversation, but um, you know, Star Trek was revolutionary in a lot of ways, and the stakes were just different. Um, the diversity on the screen, the real world issues being played out in um, in science fiction, and in a hopeful way, unlike the Twilight Zone, which was like every episode seemed to end with like horror and shock and humanity is gonna is doomed. Star oh, Trek a- ended in um, in in ways that give you hope um, and uh, or it's it's or at least balance the stories, the the warnings with with also hope. Um, uh, let's see. Rose says when I'm the cons- so far back in the chat, everybody. I apologize. I'm like only an hour in, but here we go. Rose says when cons are not happening, what do you do to forget things that help you through a bad time? Um, there's, uh, I think, being here is is part of it. Connecting with community, connecting with the things that you love, the things that you enjoy. So many of us don't have a normal schedule and routine anymore. So we need to stay connected with the stuff we love, the stuff that helps us to get detached from things that are stressful, which Star Trek is is one for a lot of us. And maybe it's Star Wars for other people. Look, I didn't realize this, Larry, but I, I have a um, Disney Plus subscription because my daughter, it's the only thing that keeps her company when, um, when things go really haywire here. Um, and I haven't rewatched... Um, Star Wars uh, The Rise of Skywalker because I did not like that movie since it came out in theaters but um I hear there's uh, Which one was that was that the last one? See I'm the, so I have such I've had I don't social distancing is new but franchise distancing is just fine. I don't I I always liked Star Wars but I'm not like eating uh, living breathing it. So Larry, it's nice sometimes Sometimes I think you're one of those uh, bad morals uh, that you that you talk about when it comes to the friend. Yes, yes, Larry, Idik. We all can love. We all can love the I franchises. I just said I'm talking about franchise distancing, not as a negative, but just uh, the fact that the sturm and drang of Star Wars fandom and and all that debate can go by, and I can stand oh, over here. Oh, That's what oh, I, sh- oh, okay, okay. You're not a bad moral. Um, no, you're I'm you're one of the good ones. You're you're not a, a, a section thirty one. Uh... I might be a admiral, but I'm not a bad. <laughs> yeah, well, there's um. Uh, no, there's but I enjoy tr- I enjoy being able to watch the Star Wars debates from afar and yeah. go. <laughs> So there's, okay. um, I heard there's a beautiful two hour long documentary um, that uh, comes along with this, uh, this last Star Wars movie, The Rise of Skywalker. And while I didn't like the movie, I want to check out that documentary. I had no idea. But documentaries about filmmaking, Rose, are a big thing for me that help me to get detached because not only do I love these stories, but I love the story of how the stories were made. So I love... I love the next generation technical manual for that. I love things that help me to understand the thought process of the of the universes, of the stories, of the filmmaking. Larry, that's like some of my favorite conversations we've had are these these wild stories about how these things came together. I just I just love that. It helps me get a little detached the from, from the yeah. stressors. And so. as uh, Rebecca said way back here, you just mentioned it again. The next generation technical manual is the next book focused on my nonfiction Fridays. Yes. Zoom meetup on Friday afternoons at three. It's a simple Zoom meetup. There's a Facebook page. Everybody can go see that. So, um, so if you if you're an old nonfiction Trek classic book fan, and suddenly realize that in the crush of the world that doesn't get talked about enough, or you're a new fan and you have no idea what we're talking about, but you're intrigued. Um, that's another aspect of, of Corona time. If uh, you're trying to find a connection and you're trying to scratch an old itch, um, another thing we're doing right now to help to help put something out there, and that's fun. So yeah, look it up on Facebook. Non, uh, nonfiction Fridays, something I, I do. I need to to tell Glenn. Glenn, you are just opening up my mind here today. Lost in space when John Williams was still known as Johnny Williams. I had no idea John Williams did, uh, did the score here to that little funky theme of Lost in Space. Um, that I didn't is, need it. Wow. Wow. Uh, thank you, Glenn, for that uh, that, uh, uh, that you have, drop of you knowledge. You have one degree more of respect for Lost in Space now. Uh, well, the theme is fun. It is a good, it is a good theme. Um 
you know, that's one of the things that I, I love about um, that also helps me get distance is uh, I love film scores. Um, and I love classical music. I love romantic era uh, music, but I, the film scores are, are just um, I love them. And Star Trek has has uh, a lot. Science fiction has a lot of great film scores. Um, Michael Giacchino with the Kelvin timeline. I love mm-hmm. his his music as well as Jerry yeah. Goldsmith. Um, I mean, Jeff Russo is uh, yeah. burning it up right now. For Jeff the, Russo, yes. it's wonderful. And with what they're doing, they're bringing in a lot of young composers to write like the short tracks. Short tracks. That's been wonderful. I've really enjoyed the diversity that we've been getting in the music. Itic. It's all it's about like Itic. It's like it's the lab theater for Star Trek. Is short <laughs> tracks. It's it's great. It's what we always. So I remember thinking, I wish they would do this show, but they'll never be able to spend the props cost. You know, I want to have a Klingon show. I want to have a show set in the founding days i want a show set halfway between kirk and picard and it's like well they won't do it because they'll need 26 a year seven years and spend the money and they're not going to do that and now we can which has nothing to do with sleep it was a dream of mine <laughs> <laughs> and it kept me up at nights until we finally got it no uh but this has been such a great chat group today oh and my gosh we, I've yeah seen more and more people on Twitch and YouTube both. Uh, uh, Rebecca has a has a great comment. I, I I'd hate to interrupt Larry, but I know where we're headed. We're we're over time, but a few more things I want to get in. Rebecca says, Rose, check out old con panels at YouTube too. Brilliant idea. Um, thank you, Rebecca, for that. You can always uh, time travel back to uh, past panels. Mm-hmm. I think that's a great skill. Um, and many of us can try. There's an ex- there's an explosion of virtual events now, as I knew there would finally be, and some of them are tickets, but most of them are ver- fairly cheap, and there are some that aren't um, a cost or they're for charity, so they have a variable rate. I, I, I think we're Larry, starting to you, explode with those. You and I are going to be doing a virtual con at the end of uh, June. Um, yes. Can so we my friend that? Neil has uh, a virtual convention coming up called Lockdown Con. Mm-hmm. I don't – he's going to shoot me. I don't think there's any admission. I think it's, yep, tar- I think it's trying to take – there are a lot of people trying to fill the gap of all the big – we've been doing this for a couple of months now. But the big – when San Diego Comic-Con has gone down, when other big conventions are – it's a vacuum over the summer now, and people are still wanting that. Some of the – like Creation is doing it for a small amount. I think Wizard World is doing that. So the chain cons, the for-profit companies are doing it, but on a real you know, small ticket, short, uh, cheap ticket. And uh, but there's a lot of virtual stuff happening with the nonprofit cons too coming. But Lockdown Con is the last weekend in June, and that's when you and I and Andre Barmanis, uh, great science advisor, scientist, writer for Trek for years, and he works on the Orville now. And I hope I'm not getting in trouble by saying all this detail right now <laughs> ahead of time. But there's some other things coming down the pike too. Um, I'm going to be in some kind of a Star Wars Star Trek uh, panel for another event coming in September from a group. I hope I'm not getting ahead of myself there too on that. But anyway, yeah, this virtual world is people will be, there'll be a stampede back to live events when we can do it safely Yes, and people yes. feel secure. But uh, this, this virtual residual is going to be around in some intriguing ways. It's not going away. It won't Ry- go back. Riseland 53 says, once we have a vaccine, I believe large convention events will return. I, I think once we have a vaccine, um, that's one oh, thing, getting that vaccine to everyone and getting uh, a good deal of vaccination is going to be the next challenge. But yes, I do think we're going to, we're going to life return to normal after 1918 culture changed. We got rid of spitting. People used to spit all the time before the mm-hmm. 1918 flu. And then that was just done with. Um, so culture will change. Culture will evolve. But uh, we will see each other again. Um, Larry, this has been a wonderful episode. I think we need to wrap it up before our yeah, our partners uh, start to say, hey, what's going on here? Uh, so a couple of things to mention here. Um, first is, folks, we are going to take your votes for the next week's episode. We already got a comment, um, a, uh, a request from, I'm, I'm scrolling up, from Sean. Who said idea for life support, music and health and space music? Yeah, let's do it. Let's make that a, um, a topic for next week. If you want to vote on our next week's episode, go to our Facebook group at mm-hmm. facebook.com slash groups slash life support live. We're going to have a poll up. We're, um, we're going to ask you about Star Trek 2009 and bullying and gatekeeping, both within the movie and as well in the fandom. So we're going to talk about that. Um, The Voyager conspiracy, misinformation, and fake news. 
We can talk about that was a fan recommendation. Oh, that's a good um, one. Yes. Yeah, Sprung that came that from our audience. Now. So thank yeah. you for that. Well, um, that's from the audience. Yay. Thank that you. was from the audience. Another one Thanks. coming in from the audience is enterprise's stigma. So stigma and discrimination as it relates to having coronavirus and also discrimination against people you think might have it. Um, what mm-hmm. we're seeing is on the rise. And we're going to add into that music and mental health. Um, and we'll, we'll throw that in there. One question I had for you, Larry, as well as the audience I'd love to do a life support live on Zoom fatigue. So are there any episodes in Star Trek where characters are remote and only interacting with each other through the view screen? I don't know. But if there is, I'd love to do it. Okay, you know what just <laughs> popped into my head? Yeah, uh, yeah. The Outrageous Okana, where they have the two competing families on the view screen and they're all getting exasperated. There That's we go. the closest thing just off top of my head that just popped in. So I, I think don't know. I think that might work. <laughs> you could tell Gene was alive. Gene was fascinated with that big view screen in the on the bridge in Next Gen, and it's you know they, I've they got just kind of became a given after a while. I've got I've got an um I I've got my own Olima two K three factor. Um the the view screens that we see in Next Generation. It's allowed. They're <laughs> <laughs> Whoosh. Um, the view screens that we see are actually designed to be three dimensional. So they're not, Picard is not seeing a two dimensional view screen. Picard is seeing a three dimensional image um, where there's actual depth. You can see the Romulan commander, but you see depth to the people um, behind that commander, which I didn't learn that until two, three years ago, Larry. Um, I, I thought that was fascinating that was always meant to be 3d see this is well it's it's an imager and of course they would have 3d and they didn't really show it as such and because you always when there wasn't an active communication going on it would just always you know original series days it would just revert back to the star stream right yeah. it was kind of like the default um what do we call it uh your, your default screen um your wallpaper <laughs> it was moving yeah. wallpaper and then not until they tried this with Insurrection did they show it like as a carpeted wall, and then it went on to the viewer, so you got it. And this whole thing of the Kelvin movies and the Discovery post is the fact that that it's a – this is a – I'm sorry, this is a, a soapbox, so I may get ready here, and I don't want to because we're trying to wrap up. But this whole thing about going back and showing the pow- the, the visual of having an gl- actual – a, a transparent aluminum or whatever it is glass window in the front of the ship starting with 09 and i'm like oh well that's all that's the mirror universe or that's the that's the kelvin timeline it's fine and now in discovery and in picard it's they're really big on oh it's so dramatic to show people looking out the window at the space and i'm like no gene's whole thing was windows are like anybody can do windows we're mm. visualizing the outside without you know we have a standard thing there to give us an illusion people on the bridge but we can show any view there and th- that's not to say that in discovery and picard and kelvin they can't instantly like like flash that window into a view screen and show different views but it just irks me that that because it's even it's even more vulnerable than having your bridge on top is having a a front viewer that can be blown out by an enemy anyway i'm sorry got off on a tangent there Mich- that, that drives me crazy. We've regressed. And we regress. Thinks, yeah, it, this is what happens when we're sleep deprived. Oh, it was more advanced the old way, you bozos. But anyway. this is this is where uh, what happens when we're sleep deprived. We uh, yes. we do a two hour long show and we go in many directions. Michelle but says part this- of this to blame is our. Part of our blame today on a two-hour show is this wonderful chat audience. Oh, my gosh. This I can't get amazing. enough of today's chat. I wish we could talk even longer. Michelle says, this was my first life support live. I'll be back. I'll be back. I squeezed in another impression, Larry. I think that's a record. Another unneeded in person. <laughs> um, thank you for coming, Michelle. Thank you for everyone who's been here. If this was your first life support live or it's your last Regardless, share this episode uh, with someone you think might benefit from it. Someone who might get a laugh and a smile and maybe sleep a little bit better. Please mm-hmm. help us help us to get the word out. We want to uh, build this community as strong as it can be. Um, thank you for everyone who's been here. Um, I'm Dr. Ali Matu, and I've got so much sleep right now on, on the stuff I'm doing. Um, I was in a YouTube original series that just came out on Wednesday. I meant it's- to mention yeah, it's called Sleeping with Friends. Thank you, Larry. Um, if yes. you go to YouTube and you go to the channel BrainCraft, you can watch all three episodes of our scientific reality competition show about sleep. 
Um, you'll learn all the sleep skills. You're going to have a lot of fun while watching it. I'm one of the judges on it. So check out Sleeping with Friends. And Sleeping then, with Friends is only the title that's meant to hook you in because it's YouTube. Yeah, and it's there's 20. no – it's like rated G. Um, and the channel that it's on is – Braincraft. Is Braincraft. Braincraft. Yeah. Yeah. Not brain crap. No. <laughs> <laughs> brain craft or you can just, just search for sleeping with friends you'll find it as well um the other thing is my next episode of the psych show is is about insomnia so um look for that as soon as i finish editing it probably tuesday or wednesday the problem is i'm trying to improve my sleep which means i, I have say, less take time, your time to edit. don't yeah. lose any sleep over yeah. your editing time. Yeah. <laughs> dr trek what's happening in trekland this week Oh, Trekland this week. Well, uh, the big four, um, the Trek Files is coming back um, Tuesday, my podcast with Roddenberry. And after, in our fifth season, we're finally going to have Rod as a guest. Yay! So Rod Roddenberry is going to be a guest. And we're going to be talking about his dad and his mom and among the, the topics we're going to have. So the Trek Files is on Facebook and where all good podcasts are caught, um, you know. Uh, that's Tuesday, and the other end of Tuesday Twofers is my live show, Trekland Tuesdays Live. Everybody, I invite you to come over if you can make it at 1 p.m. Um, Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern, on my Facebook page, Larry, Nemec Larry Nemechek's Trekland, which is also my Instagram. And then uh, Friday, I mentioned on Fiction Fridays. This week, our topic is the Next Generation Technical Manual, so come geek out with us there and then i also do a new show i am so proud of it it's so aspirational it's called life support Li oh wait that's the show <laughs> that's next saturday but yes go to the facebook page and vote on the topic uh at facebook at uh, life support live the page on facebook yeah. that's all happening and um working on some uh, virtual projects uh still got to get my taxes done um <laughs> oh gosh i need to do that you know it's uh, all the things like that yeah um, somehow we've got a, At uh, a check on Twitter. That's always good. I don't know how this happened, but we got a Picard needs Bev hashtag going. Bev needs oh, that's Ronan. Ali. That's been a two year thing. That's, oh that's my Rebecca's. Gosh. Thing. And someone mentioned Sub Rosa earlier as well. Um, if I love Sub Rosa as an episode that just cracks me up. Um, anyways, on that note. <laughs> Larry, um, it has been a pleasure speaking with as you always. all. Um, as always, Dr. Trek, um, thank you for joining me today. Yes. Um, hope you all live long and prosper. I hope you all like, share, and subscribe, whatever your favorite platform is. And I also hope you all Do trek that. well, everybody. Yeah, trek well, everyone.